Hi all, Mass Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are doing a complete teardown of this 1600 amp Merlin Turing circuit breaker. Now I did have a lot of fun with this, doing short circuit tests, uh, doing all kinds of explosions through it. So check out those high speed videos if you like to see some sparks flying. Today we are finding out how the over current circuitry works and how the build up inside with all the big copper parts and also springs and all that is actually built up. So let's get this torn down. The breaker is still charged and I certainly do not want my fingers cut off. So first let's close the switch. So let's just get this into a better position. As you can see the switches are open and this will of course give the same nice kick that we have seen earlier. Wow! Ah yeah, I forgot. It of, of course smacks back, but now it's at least discharged. So we can remove our test wires and get to tear this down. Now it seems to consist of a huge plastic base, which is yeah, put together here. And then we have the whole front here, which also seems to be cut into three sections. But as we can see here on the back side, we have eight large screws here. So uh, I think I will remove them first and we can take the whole bus bar part out. So the whole back panel here came loose. And as you can see, this is what I talked about earlier, this being serviceable, that you can change all these wear parts. So let's just get that up here again. So here we can see some of the damage that I have done, all this newly blown off copper. Whereas the normal wear plates here, that is just for the main contacts, uh, which have been worn down in its regular use. Whereas I'm pretty sure I did a lot of this arcing damage over at the first yeah, arc connecting plates over here. So we have a current transformer sitting around the copper bar here. Just barely comes off. You can see that's also what we could see through a small window at the back of the plastic, 1600. So if this is anything like a normal CT, it would be 1600 to 5 amps, and then it would be able to be reused. Does not say anything about the ratio on these ones. Nope. And I don't really see where the plug goes, so yeah. They, those would have to be disconnected at the front first. So we'll have to do that in order to not damage this. But getting that whole assembly out... Ah, we have a single screw down there as well. Let's see. Some kind of plastic cover here. Seems like a uh, smoke or energy trap for yeah, any dust or Gas is coming from the main switching area here, should not be able to get down into the control electronics, but I would have to free up those uh, connectors first. Okay, it was not so bad, just the three small connectors sitting down there. Snap them off. And we can remove the rest of the current transformers. Here you can see the piece of plastic running the wire up and down. Not much see there. And it seems like it's just a single screw holding in this. At least the first part here. OK, 
Okay, so there's more to it than the, just this single screw. That brought us to the front of the unit. So we have to get some more parts off the front here in order to find out where the remaining bus bars on the back are actually fastened. But of course they are somehow uh, connected to the whole spring assembly in order to switch in as this is the remaining part is the moving arm. So at first we can remove the whole overcurrent detection module here. So we will take a closer look at this, what's uh, inside. But we see we have the three phases current transformers connecting here and yeah, that was, this was the thermistor. So uh, a pretty simple unit. Seems to have four end contacts which go down into this mechanism, which tells me that uh, the two in the middle will, would not be switched unless it moves far enough, and the two outer would be the opposite. So it seems like you have four switches and you want two of them to be on. Or, yeah, these two should not be um, switched on, but these two should. So that's simply just four switches in order to get some redundancy over this switching metal part. So it could seem like that we need to disconnect something like this small shaft there. And there's of course another one in there and another one over here. And I would like the mechanical part here to come off as one, as that could be so fun to reuse for something like a catapult. Okay, so we have some standoffs coming out from these very long mounts here. Have to be careful not to charge it again. Not that it happens just like that. I had to modify the chassis a bit with a hammer in order to get the yeah the pin out here. As we see, we have these. 10 large braided copper connections here down to the bus bar itself from the switching arm. It has this uh, plastic part here which actually ensures that you have a tight fit for all gases not getting into the front of the unit along with this one. So a lot of plastic barriers to avoid any yeah, switching damage arcs, smoke and such from getting out of the switching chamber. And we can see here, this was manufactured 25th of September, 1997. So that's coming in at a good 24 years old right now. So I'll see if I can get all of these out. See, a lot of this is just press fit. Very uh, easy to manufacture. Um, I don't think this is, has much manual process over it. Not even the soldering job in here seems to be made with a very high pressure. But we will also take that apart and see if we can just see some details on each, as each of these are actually spring-loaded in itself. So it was quite clear that getting the pin out on the front side was not really an option. But you actually had to push this up all the way here against the spring, which is pretty hard. Uh, and then there is some kind of pin inside here that you can simply drag to the side and the whole unit comes loose. So now we have all three of these out of the chassis and that would also mean that the whole front unit here should come right off now. Uh, 
and just like that. So, this is what it looks like on the back side. Here you can see the uh, pin connectors, one for each face. We have the la large main spring here. And it is the mechanism itself that ensures that it can also disconnect again from the same spring energy. So it actually must come to a point where it tips over and once it's there it has energy to go the opposite way. Quite a clever design. On the inside here we can actually see it's a double spring. I did not see that earlier. There's another thinner spring on the inside of the large one here. But it's the same action I think. Uh, there does not seem to be any actuators on the inside or perhaps there is there seems to be some kind of thin cylinder here and it's thicker over here so unless we have something going up through the axle here which i do not see i think it's just the same axle still maybe with some kind of damper inside but the this nice mechanical unit here which can charge that spring we will for sure have some fun with that. So to the side with this and let's take a look at the switching parts. You can feel there's some spring action there. Here we have the pin connecting spring that I had to press to the side in order to disconnect it. But now we should see all of these come out. So here we have it. Actual sit with sits with double springs. So if you have a one spring fail, you at least have one other. So again, redundancy in the, all over the design. Besides, you also have the ten arms already. So a lot of thought and design has gone into making this last for a very long time under very harsh conditions. You can have a lot of parts fail and operation is still within normal specifications. As you can see here, that's what I talked about, very high pressure, high temperature soldering fits here. And unfortunately there's not much to reuse this for. Um, very big sized uh, 800 square millimeters bus bars and with these 10 yeah maybe some very high current uh, low voltage power supply but not really planning to do much of that so that is just going back to the scrap yard So at first we seem to have some kind of switch here, which uh, did push down against the other unit here. So that's simply just a uh, census if this is even connected. Oh, wait a minute, that's just a mechanical indication. Or push to reset. It's a push button. So you can, okay, that just goes down to reset the the switching out latch coil here, because that went all the way down to some part here. So that's simply just a reset of the yeah trip mechanism that we have here with this small actuator. The design itself here, a lot of protection on the inside. Have some nice big C-Mac. Seems like power resistors. Controlled by a NEC chip, so some kind of microcontroller. We have a 4.194 megahertz crystal sitting here. Have a small extension board here. Not much other than diodes, resistors. So that's perhaps some kind of uh, option programming card. On the other side we have uh, the potentiometers. Oh, that's actually the switching contacts. Uh, 
That's quite funky. So if it's encoders or just... That feels very weird. Ah, okay, so you only have a few settings. It's not like a potentiometer that moves between the values. You only have to choose between those four values, for example, of, of these eight. Other than that, pretty simple design. You have your, all your input protection on your current transformers. Uh, most likely switching spike protection. Then you have your option card, you have your microcontroller, crystal, and of course all adjacent circuitry for the ADC. It's funny, there only seems to be one up amp, but that is perhaps a three channel, but I doubt that. So maybe we'll have some others over here, but most likely a bus interface and some digital inputs over here. So maybe this just gets summed up by a single one and it's actually just looking for a leakage or difference between the phases. Having removed the plastic parts from the receiving part here, where we have these switching points go in and hit here, and we have the arcing point over here that gets up in contact with the copper part above here, we can see that the whole impedance circuit of this is just from here through there over here very short and very high capacity bus bars goes straight through you have the yeah wear surface mounted directly at the end here so very very sturdy design and these uh, plastic parts here that that's actually to uh, just to make a distance to the hole that's made in the chassis so you can use this chassis for a wide variety of range of breakers and you simply change this plastic part to a higher or smaller one uh, according to the size of the bus bar. Thank you for watching this teardown. I hope you enjoyed seeing how sturdy and well built a circuit breaker of this size really is. Thank you for watching, but I have got to go because it's beer time. Beer me. What? <laughs> ah, cheers. <laughs>